once the filtrate is collected in Bowman's space, it flows into the proximal convoluted tubule where most of the substances that need to be reabsorbed into the body will be. About 65% of reabsorption occurs here. I'm going to switch to the middle model to show you the beginning of the proximal convoluted tubule and then its continuation. So throughout this proximal convoluted tubule, uh, most reabsorption is occurring. At the same time, the capillary beds that are nearby are secreting any waste substances that may not have entered filtrate uh, originally in the corpuscle. So there's exchange both ways with the blood. The filtrate then travels through the loop of Henle. There are two types, the long loops of Henle and a variety that's a shorter loop. Okay. If we look on this model, there's a shorter version. Again, there's reabsorption and secretion that occurs along the way. As the loop of Henle ascends, it re-enters into the cortex and comes very close to the corpuscle. And it becomes then the, the distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubules empty into collecting ducts. In the collecting ducts, the final composition of urine is determined. Collecting ducts join together to make a papillary duct and the final urine product drips out of the openings. And I'm going to switch now to the rest of the model. So papillary ducts are here. The urine then is caught in the minor calyces.